Hi, tonight we're going to show you how to set up your video projection and how to make a map of your uh, house so that we can customize a video to fit your house. It's really not as complicated as you might think and so we'll just take it step by step. The first thing you need to do is get your projector out in front of your house and just move it around and find a really good spot where it covers most of your house. As you can see, I've just set up a card table here. I've got my projector out, my computer's attached to it, and of course, uh, I've moved it around and figured out a nice spot so that it'll cover most of the house. It's also important to position the projector as close to the house as possible while still getting the coverage you need. The closer the projector is, the brighter and sharper the image will be. Any extra space around the house is wasting your brightness and sharpness. If you look closely, you can see how the edges of my projected image are right up against the edges of my house. Making an accurate map of your house is really important. You might not be satisfied with the result otherwise. Some people have the temptation to just run out in front of their house and start snapping pictures and think that that's going to make an accurate map, but that's not going to work. You actually need to be very careful about how you map your house so that you can get a nice, clean, accurate map that'll look really cool. So as you can see, we're not too far from our house here. We're just out here on the sidewalk. The reason we're able to do that is because we have a short throw projector. A short throw projector is made for situations like a small classroom where you want to project a big image without the projector being too far back. And that works great for house projections. Um, some people have large pieces of property and it's not a problem to have a regular projector and you can move it back quite far. Some people will even do it from across the street. Um, for me, i much rather just use my own power and be nice and close to my house, so I use a short throw projector. So you might want to look into that. So as you can see, we've got a piece of wood under the back of the projector there. That's because it needs to be pointed down a little bit. The projector is really designed to throw an image up onto a wall, but we want it to go mostly straight. So that's why we have the piece of wood there. So when you get your projector and set it up, don't be surprised if you need to do that. Your projector and your computer will probably not have the same display resolution, and that's fine. Usually the projector will take the video input from your computer and display it as large as possible. That's what you want. What you don't want is for the image on your computer screen or on the projector to look too small, squished, or stretched. If that's happening, you'll first want to check the aspect ratio setting on the projector. Every projector is different, so check out the manual that came with yours for instructions on how to do that. We typically provide the videos in 16 by 9 aspect ratio, so you'll want to choose a setting like that. Sometimes when you plug a projector in, the resolution of the computer will automatically change to match the native resolution of the projector. You'll want to change it back to what it normally is so nothing looks squished or stretched. You do that in the display settings on your computer. In Windows 10, right-click anywhere on your desktop. Select Display Settings from the drop-down. In the resulting window, scroll down a bit and click Advanced Display Settings. Now you can see your screen resolution right here. It's a drop-down so you can browse through other available resolutions. Just select what's normal for your computer. Make a note of what your display resolution is and let us know when you send us your map. That will help us out on our end. It's time to open up Microsoft Paint and begin drawing. Click Start. All Apps. Scroll down to the Windows section and click on Windows Accessories. Click on Paint. Usually it looks like this when you first open it. The first thing you want to do is maximize the window so you can cover as much of your house as possible. If the white image doesn't fill the screen, grab the corner like this and drag it out so it is as large as possible. Now you can start drawing, but if you use the default pencil tool, you'll end up with squiggly lines that look like a kindergartner drew them. To make nice straight lines, you'll need to use the line tool here. Now when you draw, you get perfectly straight lines. A medium line size like this works well. It's possible that this toolbar here will get in the way. You can minimize it by clicking up here and selecting Minimize the Ribbon. That will give you a little more room. If you look up at your house, you'll see that everything you draw here is projected up there. So now it's time to draw. Alright, so you can see my mouse. I'm moving it around on the house here. And I'm going to bring it over here and I'm going to bring it up here. There. 
So now I'm going to go through this whole process and I'm going to basically draw a sketch in my house. Draw another one here. Out to the edge of the roof. And I'll just keep going. Draw a nice line there. Draw another one here. On the computer screen, this is what I eventually end up with. I go ahead and save the image, and now it can be emailed as an attachment. Be sure to snap a photo of your house too during the daytime, just so we can see what it looks like. That will help us choose the best place to put the video elements. So, you'll be sending us this image, a photo of your house, and you'll also be sending us your screen resolution. Now when you're doing this, you might have a tendency to want to get every single little detail like your doorknob or your, uh, your outdoor la lanterns or whatever. You don't really need to get that detail. And if you're slightly a few inches off here and there, I mean, it's a big house, right? So small imperfections like that aren't going to show up. We mostly just need to have an idea of where the big sections are going to go. So. Um, when I say accuracy is important, it is, but don't sweat the small stuff. So as you can see, this is not a very sophisticated setup with just a card table here. And if you're doing a one-night party or something like that where you're just going to set it up once and you're pretty sure the weather's going to be good, uh, this might be totally fine. Um, if you're not sure if the weather's going to be good and you want to protect it from rain, you might get a, a plastic bin or a a plastic box and turn it upside down and then cut a hole in the end maybe for the uh, the projector light to come out of um, and that would protect it from rain but you'd have to be sure that there's uh, some holes in it for ventilation and you might even need to put a fan in there because the projector will produce a lot of heat and it'll tend to overheat pretty easily now for myself I wanted to project every night uh, for a long time and I didn't want to have to sit around and and watch the projection I mean make sure nobody ran off with my projector so I actually built a uh, a nice plywood box and I uh, painted it and sealed it and I I made it so that I could use a bicycle chain to chain it to a weight that I put in the ground here and then I put a lock on it and so forth now we live on a corner right under a street light as you can see um, so we're kind of fortunate that way and plus when you're doing a projection you tend to get a lot of attention anyway and that thieves don't like attention so uh, we haven't had any problems with anybody stealing it um, we have another video on our channel if you want to check it out that shows um, how uh, we built that box and if you'd like more details about that you can just contact us and uh, we'll get you that information